Yo, welcome. Um, let's see. Um, today I wanted to talk about um, different countries and DJing in different countries, going to parties in different countries. Um, I have been going to events uh, and festivals since 2005. I've been a DJ since 2012 in the industrial scene. Um, I've been to a bunch of countries, I've DJed in a bunch. Um, then I wanted to talk about like the differences between those countries. Um, let's uh, first off start with the, the, the countries I've DJed at um, and by proximity, um, since I'm Dutch. And, uh, um, uh, that is the, <laughs> the close proximity and I am the most, no most knowledgeable about this country, I'll talk about it first. Um, yep, that's turned on. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, um, the differences between countries. Here in the Netherlands, we have a uh, long history with electronic music producers. Um, we are in general uh, not that great with like bands, where, you know, with like bands with guitars and drums and you know, live stuff. However, a lot of electronic producers, uh, a lot of really big names um, in the mainstream, um, not so much in the underground, but uh, you can't help that, but uh, can't help but uh, it being uh, getting cross pollinated basically. Um, of course, the, uh, the genre of Gabber uh, or uh, hardcore techno, uh, as you might know it, um, or as people incorrectly call it, Gabber. Uh, no, it's Gabber with the heart G, with the guttural G, because uh, it's actually from here. So that's the actual name. Sorry about being pedantic about that, but um, uh, plus it's it, it's kind of funny because you know usually people can pronounce G. Anyway, um, that makes it so that um, in general here in the Netherlands, um, the industrial scene kind of likes louder, faster stuff, like harder. Um, this might also be because, um, the fact that like, uh, to put it, uh, party enhancement items are more readily available here. So <laughs> that's, uh, that's also a factor. Um, there's a, there's a balance between, uh, it being, um, fresh new music. Um, especially the people that I've been DJing with around me, around my age, um, the people from the collective that I set up, um, they tend to be uh, go more towards newer music in general. There are also a lot of nostalgia parties still, um, and they get usually get a lot of good audience um, numbers. Um, so there, 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 there's, um, you know, there, there, there's a difference. Um, but in, in general, like to summarize, a um, bit louder than the rest, um, slightly bit newer, but not as much as I would like it personally. Um, but that, you know, that's a personal opinion. Anyway, um, so the next country over is going to be Belgium. Uh, Belgium does have a um, big history with really good bands. Uh, a lot of, you know, like, you know, things like Soul Wax or uh, a bunch of others that I can't really come up with right now, but uh, they're there. And, you know, after a video is done, I'll probably be able to name 20, 20 more, but, uh, you know, that, uh, that happens. <laughs> Um, oh yeah, by the way, if you're coiling cables, do one over, twist it, under, over, under. It's less wearing your cables. Um, otherwise, if they keep spiraling like this, it's always be, going to be the tension. It's going to be on one side. This, you're going to alternate the tension, so it's better. Um, so, yeah, Belgium uh, has more like bands, bands. Uh, they have also, you know, of course, the, the, the big history of all the, um, you know, starting the new beat, starting basically starting EBM, 
the electronic bunny music with front two for two um uh, a bunch of other really big bands such as lords of acid who you know originated uh, acid house that kind of stuff so uh belgium is a very interesting place uh, musically um going to parties there um it's i feel like it's slight bit more focused on bands versus producers um but we're in the industrial scene so a lot of his producers um in general but um so yeah yeah belgium is kind of nice um the next country over uh in proximity will be germany um now this this is uh, a thing um a lot of people like germany i also like germany as a country i like the people um musically uh i don't um that's not to say that uh you know it's bad music or bad artists not at all it's my personal opinion my personal taste um the problem how i see it um with the german scene is that um audiences in germany really like to hear things that they're familiar with uh, as you know we all do i mean uh we all like things that we know people are they don't like change in, in general people don't like change so um can't really fault people for that but at the same time you know it, it's it's um it can create a situation that i find to be unhealthy um because okay and i don't like ripping on audiences or fans or whatever because you know that, that that's that's just bad form i think um but i got a name uh got a name it uh, or tell it the way I view it because um, and this is not trying to rip on people or you know um, this is just me trying to explain the situation and what my thoughts are on it so you know uh, don't think I hate German people or whatever you know that's that's totally not <laughs> what I'm trying to tell you um, and <laughs> I hate it that I have to be very clear about this because, you know, on the internet, you never know what, you know, people take one snippet of information and will turn it into something really big and get it totally out of context. So anyway, the German audience um, generally wants to hear things that they're familiar with. Um, so DJs will uh, then cater to that. They will play tracks that people are familiar with. Um, but this creates a feedback loop and that's not a good thing because, uh, so people will hear the same thing that they're familiar with and they keep hearing the same thing. So it's difficult for new bands to get in there. Uh, there is a big healthy scene as far as uh, events go. There's a lot of people in Germany there's the, and the events are generally well attended. Um, the thing is though, they do a lot of the same thing. And um, while people very much enjoy that, um, it's going to wear out and eventually take for example um, if you go to an event and you hear a track and you really and you go like oh this is a cool track I like this and then you go to another um, event and you hear the same track and then it's like now you're getting used to it. It's still, it's still very nice still. And you know, you heard a couple of times and, and, and it's still cool. Um, you've been five times, you heard five, five times, and you like it. You go home, you listen to it on Spotify or whatever streaming platform you like or wherever, it doesn't matter. Um, for the same track, a DJ will probably have heard that track 10, ten times over. Um, first of all, you go looking for new music. That's, that's one. Uh, then you hear it like first time you go like oh shit that, this, this is cool and and they listen probably listen to it like another time just to just to be sure like you know um 
Is it just my first reaction? Is this track cool or after a second listen do, do I think it's not that great? Um, if you really enjoy it, you might play it another time. Um, and then when you start sorting your music, uh, you know, you listen to it again, you give it like a rating and, you know, um, uh, you know, put it in, in your software or burn it to CD or put it on a USB stick or whatever, you might listen to it again. Then you go and maybe practice at home with that, that track, you know, try a different transition with another track, maybe it doesn't work and you try it again, 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 again. Uh, then you go to an event and uh, before you go to an event, you make a pre-selection of the music, like which tracks do we want to want to play, what's with the audience like, um, because, you know, I, I could I could bring like, I don't know, for example, like ambient drum music, but if I'm playing at, uh, at an industrial event that's there for dancing, they're not going to appreciate me bringing ambient drone because it's undanceable. And it's not expected um, for what people want. All right, so uh, so the pre-selection, I listen to the track again and go like, yeah, that's a good track. Put it in the playlist. Then I play it on the event. Um, maybe I make a mixtape. Listen to uh, pre make a pre-selection. So listen to the song again. Uh, do it in my mix. Maybe I make a mistake in my mix and I have to like re-record it. So play it again. So. For every track that you hear, as an audience member, a DJ, you know, maybe has like heard it ten times over or more even. So the problem with this is that, um, like with anything good, um, it can and will get to be boring eventually. You'll uh, it, it'll lose its shine. Um, it, it it definitely just won't. It won't be as cool as on the first time, the first couple of times. So that's very unfortunate. That's just a reality that we have to deal with. Um, this is why DJs in general like to uh, push newer things. Because, you know, it's still fresh. It's still uh, good to us. Um, and there's, of course, you know, you gotta, uh, you're playing for an audience. You're not playing just for yourself. Um, so, you know, you gotta play, sometimes you gotta play tracks that, you know, you might not enjoy as much anymore. Um, but, you know, that, that, that's this reality, you, you can't be there just for yourself. Or at the same time, um, if you're gonna be there, um, just play what other people like and something you don't enjoy. And you don't enjoy doing it, you don't enjoy being there. Um, it's time to either quit DJing or quit doing those tracks. Um, so that's a that difficult thing, you know, uh, relegating between what you like, what you want, what the audience wants. Um, it's not always that simple. It, you know, it, 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 you know, DJing looks simple uh, at first. It's like, you know, just play one track and play other track. Um, but things can get like really intimidating. Like, you know, put this in front of someone I mean, you know, you know that this does volume here, this does volume there, but what the hell does the rest do? You don't really know, probably. Uh, maybe unless you're, you know, in a band yourself or sound engineer, that could be, but you know, doesn't matter, that's besides the point. Um, so the other thing is that there's a lot of big festivals in Germany. Uh, so like I said, uh, Number-wise, the, the, the scene is healthy, um, but getting new things in is not. And I find this to be a very big error that uh, I, I personally think needs to be corrected because doing the same thing over and over, um, it's, it's, it, it eventually start losing people, you know. Um, I've seen certain bands, like probably, you know, I've been to events or festivals where the same band has played at, you know, I've seen like 10 times before, like uh, they've been on the, uh, you know, uh, the event where I would be or the festival, but you know, maybe the first two, three times, I'll, I'll probably check it out. There's some bands that I, I still like every time that I, I see them, I, I go look for them. 
However, um, if you know, if, if if it's a band that doesn't have as much staying power, I'm not gonna go to watch them the, the tenth time. That's just not gonna happen. So that's a big problem between you know the the, the German festivals. They uh, sort of rotate the lineup every uh, couple of years um, and rotate between the different festivals, they rotate the lineups. So there's like a handful of bands that will basically play every festival or at least a couple of festivals during the, 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 the same festival season. Um, and I, un I understand it from like a business perspective. Because people want to hear a certain band and they want to pay for a certain band. Um, and it's definitely a luxury problem if, for me. Because I've been here in this scene a long time and I've seen a lot of bands. Um, if you're from a very far away country, you can't afford to go to any of these festivals, you're going to be happy as, you know, as can be to go watch these bands. I've seen some of these bands so many times that I'm... I am bored of them, and that is definitely uh, a luxury problem from my side. However, looking at the bigger picture, uh, you gotta admit that getting fresh new stuff in is a very important factor. Um, so that's why I'm gonna shift to the next country over, that's gonna be the UK. Um, I've been there a couple of times now, and I really enjoy it there. Uh, I like British people a lot. Um, uh, but the thing is with the UK, it's uh, it's an island off the coast of Europe, so it's going to be more difficult for them to get in uh, European bands because uh, you know I gotta take a boat or you know a flight, um, and especially you know in the future when the whole Brexit thing will go through, it's going to require visas again. Um, so that's you know a very difficult situation for a lot of European bands, uh, and we are in general European bands, DJs, whatever. We're close by. Um, I'm talking about American bands or South American bands, you know, bands from Africa or Asia or Australia. It's gonna be even more expensive, gonna be more difficult even still. Um, but the UK has a very vibrant scene of smaller bands um also a bunch of big bands but like you know um like medium-sized bands um they're doing really well at that because there are there's enough people there and there's enough uh cross-pollination between the scenes and whatnot um so my personally my favorite festival in the world is info festival which is the end of august uh it's in bradford near leeds in the north of england um I've been to 2014, 2016, 17, 18, 19. This year, probably not gonna happen. We can't really tell, you know, can't really say anything about this whole virus quarantine thing. So um, it might happen, it might not. Uh, I hope it does, but you know, there's, there's, there's absolutely no guarantee. About this, uh, but it's my favorite festival in the world. Um, I've did it at it uh, once in 2014. Uh, it was my first experience with the festival. I have seen my friends DJ there. Um, I've seen my friends perform there. Um, I have made friends there. I I would say that the Infest Festival um, is a family, uh, and it, it is sort of like a smaller festival it's just the one podium um it does have a bar and a golf karaoke and whatever but the main thing is like there's this one stage where life perform bands perform live um there's a couple of hundred people um like 500 or a bit more than that but uh, you get to see the same people and um I've also DJ at really big uh, really big festivals and there comes a point that you're just like an anonymous person basically in, 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 a, in a crowd 
and that can be cool but at the same time you know um it's nice to like run into like acquaintance like well, okay like, hey, man how are you doing like you know just haven't seen it for a year what's up you know i drink a drink a beer or you know whatever um so yeah the, uh, the uk has this you know um sort of self-contained scene that also sort of has to do new things and i think that's really interesting just as as a dj but also as an audience member because i always keep seeing like because i am you know one of the people that's like uh i would say like organizers and bands they're the most involved with the of course the, like the musicians the organizers and the djs were like and, and then the honest members like how involved we are um and but i always keep like watching like uh, uh, looking at it from like the audience perspective um i i am also a dj i'm also an organizer these are all things i've done and behind me is for things i've done and upstairs i got a bunch more posters and whatnot of the things I've done um, but let's keep looking at it like what do I want to see what do I want to hear um, that's the perspective I, I, I keep trying to um, keep trying to have on this and the UK is really good for that uh, so um, the next country over um, Poland I have been to Poland um, I've DJed there um, it's a fun place. It's, um, I would say, music-wise, it's, um, they like older stuff, but they also enjoy new stuff as well. So it's, it's, it's a pretty healthy mix. It's kind of like, you know, like, like Belgium, more or less. It's, um, it's not anywhere what the UK is, nor is it anything like Germany. That's sort of like, you know, in, in, in between. Um, so yeah, uh, Netherlands, Belgium, Germany, Poland, UK. I've been to Japan, I've DJed there. Um, Japan is also a island country. Um, like the UK, uh, they're off the continent. The only difference, well, the only difference, there's a lot of differences, but a big difference between the UK and Europe is that the UK is still close to Europe. It's gonna be more difficult to get bands from Europe to, to, to the UK. But it's going to be a hell of a lot <laughs> more difficult to get those bands to Japan because a flight ticket is going to be at least 500 euros per person. Um, so a lot of bands who play in Japan, um, they will just go on vacation and do a gig because um, like financially, <laughs> It's a difficult thing because if you want to like rent a place to do live music, what they call a live house, a music venue, um, you can rent one from like, you know, in Tokyo, for example, from 12 till 6 in the morning. That's the, the regular times that, you know, um, these events run. Uh, so a venue for like 100 people probably costs you 2,000 euros a night. Rent. 2,000 euros. So that's why also the, the prices to go to an event there are really expensive. Um, the event I played at, uh, they were probably 3,500 yen, which is, you know, probably around like 30 euros or about, you know, $35. Um, so uh, they got to recoup the cost that, it, you know, for, 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 the rent of, the, of those places, which is insanely high. Uh, here in Europe, we can complain about, you know, renting prices being high, which is fair enough. In Japan, however, and especially in Tokyo, it's gonna be way worse. So uh, if you're gonna be doing like a big name band and you're gonna be paying 2000 euros for, for the venue and you're gonna be playing, you know, maybe the same amount of money for, um, for for that band for you know all costs like hotel flights uh, their their fee and whatever um so you're down four thousand euros and you need to recoup that uh and your tickets are like 35 euros uh you need to so you can need to get um um so if you get 100 people in you're for uh you're on 
3,500 euros, so you're still 500 euros short. See the problem with this, this situation, um, but since it is a bigger band that you know might ask for like 2,000 euros or whatever price that, that, that they will have, you probably need a venue that's even bigger. So it's gonna be more cost. So uh, the band that really has the problem that of, of, you know, doesn't have any proximity to, to any other countries that are doing industrial. I mean, if you look to East Asia or Asia in general, there's, there's not a whole lot of countries that, you know, have this, uh, this scene. Um, so it's, uh, it's, 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 it's a bit more difficult uh, for them to, to do, especially, you know, cost wise. Um, so there, there, there is a, um, there's a good lively, uh, local scene, of course. Um, Japan is not, uh, it's a very inward looking country. Um, uh, they're generally not very international and it's also going to be more difficult to, uh, as a band or DJ to go international because, you know, it will take more, uh, it will take more money and, um, the English proficiency for a lot of Japanese people, um, is generally not that high. Um, so they have a few things that uh, makes it more difficult for them and that's unfortunate because um, I really enjoy going there. Uh, I have been now twice, I've DJed there three times. It's a fantastic country. When, once all this quarantine virus business thing is over, I'm going to go back. I have um, had to cancel my, uh, my ticket. Uh, because I was supposed to go end of May, uh, that's not gonna happen. Um, so I canceled, uh, I got like a voucher, so um, I can use it within like 12 months. Hopefully all this business will be done by then. Otherwise I'll be down quite a bit of money, which is not good. Um, but you know, yeah. Uh, to other countries I've been to, uh, not as a DJ, but as an audience member. Um, well, if I've been going on for almost 30 minutes, damn. Well, anyway, uh, <laughs> so I've been uh, to the Czech Republic. I've been to Audio Trauma Festival in Prague, which is really cool. Um, that's quite a bit of different music than like the more, well, normal industrial, when they like, really say it, but it's it's quite a bit different uh than 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 the usual stuff to to say it um as i've been to, to to a small bar um that wasn't uh you know associated with the festival itself and just had like a regular golf industry night so you know it's not just the one festival uh and they they, they played a bunch of cool like you know also newer stuff and whatnot so um i, I enjoyed that um, it, it, it felt a bit, um, oh, just, just to make like a short, go back, like just a short, small bit, uh, to Germany. Um, I found that uh, Prague was a little bit like, uh, Leipzig. Um, they have the Wave Gothic Treffe Festival there and the Wave Gothic Treffe Festival is definitely a good festival. Um, they have, um, uh, a lot of like different things um there they are the festival to go to if you go to, to germany that that is you know um i might have been very negative uh, um, about it in general for like germany wise but uh, vgt that's a good festival so uh don't get me wrong um but it felt sort of like uh, music wise it felt sort of like what they did in in leipzig as well so that, that was that was kind of cool um so prague yeah good city good place um i liked it um I was al i've also been to madrid twice um seen bands there um and been to uh events there um it was cool they have um they also have a good local scene in in, in spain it's it's not very big uh compared to how big the country is um but there's a, there's a bunch of cool bands there. So that's, um, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a nice country for industrial. So yeah, the, the, these are the countries that I've been to as a DJ or as an audience member. Um, 
I've not been to the U.S. Um, however, there is a pretty healthy uh, scene in the U.S. Uh, and in Canada and in certain parts uh, of those countries. Because um, they're very big countries. Uh, you can't really say like the whole country is the same because that, that's, that, that's impossible to state. Um, but yeah, especially uh, when I see playlists go come by on like Facebook or whatever, and I see like the guys from uh, from a party in Boston uh, called Ceremony, and I look at those and go like, damn, that's a good playlist, with, like a lot of really good good new music. So um, you know, with this whole coronavirus thing, um, since now we can't do events pretty much anywhere on the planet. Uh, we're all going to live stream. So what I, I am currently doing is I am just looking up everybody who's live streaming, just contacting them like, hey man, want to do a live stream together sometime. Um, I have a bunch of responses and I'm going to look into, you know, what works, what not. Because, um, you know, there's also, um, especially with, you know, people from like the US, there's going to be like a big time difference. Um, not so much on the East Coast, but you know, if we're gonna be talking about the West Coast, it's definitely gonna be like a half, almost like half a day uh, of difference. Um, so yeah, that could be interesting. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna gonna go check uh, how those things will end up. Uh, would be cool to you know, um, cool to play at well, virtually play at certain events that I have not been to, but would like to go to. So, yeah, um, that's, that, that's the story I have for today, really. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got through almost 30 minutes of it. Um, well, it's, it's off my mind. Uh, it might, now it might be on yours. Um, might be a lot to think about. Or maybe just something to skim over. Well, thanks for watching. Bye.